Good day and welcome to our quick demonstration and explanation of everything you could possibly want to know about the snipping tool in Windows 11. So this is the Windows 11 snipping tool. And let us clarify something. In Windows 10, there was a product called the snipping tool, which, which did basic screen grabs. And about halfway through Windows 10's life, Microsoft brought out a new tool called Snip and & Sketch. And Snip & Sketch allowed some markup capabilities but really wasn't much better than the old snipping tool. So in Windows 11, to make things less confusing, the Snip and Sketch tool, they just renamed Snipping Tool. So there is some confusion as to what to call it. So let's get to showing you how to use this product. And we'll show you a few features that you probably aren't aware of. And they're kind of cool. So let's get to it. To launch the Snipping Tool, click Start and type Snip. You'll see it here. Once it's running, you can right click on it if you wish and select pin to taskbar. Another thing you can do is press the Windows key, shift and S for snipping tool. The first thing is, look, we'll just take a quick snip to show you how this works. So I will grab that portion of the desktop right there. And you can see that I've now got the screen capture and I can paste that into Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, anything. So just to prove that point, I'm gonna go into Word. There we go. There it is, okay? So you can paste that into anything, straight into Outlook, email, whatever you want. Let's get rid of that for the moment. Okay, there are other kinds of snips as well though. There's the window mode, which if I have a, another program up and I select window mode and then I take a new snip, it will grab just that window. So if I have Word, Excel, PowerPoint, a couple of browsers up and I click on We'll say Excel, it'll just take the Excel window. Not a popular option because you can just press Alt and print screen on your keyboard to do the same thing. So this is actually more steps than just the old way. Then there's full screen mode. That will take a snip of all of your screens. So if you just have one screen, it'll just take the one screen. If you have four screens, it will grab them all. Lovely, not that interesting. The one that is interesting here is freeform mode. So let's just show you that. I'm just gonna do something nutty here, just to prove the point that you can do nutty things. I'm gonna leave my mouse way over there and just drop it. There it is. And it grabs it, All right? Whatever I drew. The next thing that's uh, of interest is the timer. You can click the little drop down like I've just done and set it to snip in five seconds. And you'd you might ask yourself, why would anybody want to delay taking a screen grab? Well, a couple of reasons. So for instance, the other day, I needed to type in a password and then click the little I at the end to get it to be displayed. And I needed to send that screenshot off to someone for troubleshooting purposes. So I set it to, in my case, snip in 10 seconds. In 10 seconds, the screen froze and I was able to drag a rectangular selection box, which took a snip, including the passwords. That was great. Another thing is, say you have a pop-up that's occurring. Well, if you set your timer, you may be able to force the pop-up to occur and then get a screen grab of it. So that's kind of helpful. All right, so that's not that interesting. The next thing's also not rocket science. and then, But after that, we start getting into some interesting bits and pieces here. So let's just move this one out of the way because it's kind of uh, silly. Um, let's go to this one and uh, you can click on the ballpoint pen. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna select, uh, let's go with uh, that color and I want it to be really thick. So let's, there we go. And I can make opaque markings on it. Now, I actually don't want that, so I'm going to select back to get rid of it. The next thing is the highlighter. And again, the highlighter, not that hard to figure out. Let's go with the green here, and I will just draw on it. And you can see it's transparent, so you can see through it. That's the difference between those two. Not that interesting. So let's go here, and I'll erase all of the ink. That's the next one. Now, this is where it starts to get interesting. Here, from here on, and the settings. So let's show you the ruler. So the ruler is one of those things almost nobody uses. So let's go to this one because there's some angles we want to show. So I'll click on the ruler here and there's the ruler. Now you can grab the ruler, move it up and down and I can go back to my ballpoint pen and I can choose that color. Now I can just draw in here as you can see, but if I'm near to the ruler, look what happens. It snaps to it, right? Which is great. Uh, you think, okay, not that all exciting. Yeah, but this is, look. See this little degree setting in the middle? I'll put my mouse somewhere near the middle of this and I will use the wheel on my mouse to rotate. And that might actually be useful for someone. I can still do freelance here, but I can also draw using the ruler. 
let me just move this around. The ruler pivots depending on where your mouse is. So I'll put the ruler there and watch. See, I'm using my wheel. And so that's kind of a helpful thing for some people. All right, let's get rid of all of that. Actually, I'm going to go here to erase and I'm going to erase all ink just to make it easier again. And let's get rid of the ruler. The way you do that is to click the drop down here and then click on ruler again. Let's show the protractor, however, because the protractor is pretty cool. I can just draw around it. Now you change your pen color as we've shown. There we go. But the neat part here again is use that wheel. So I'm going to drag this over to here and I'm going to use the wheel on the mouse and I'm going to draw that. I don't know why I would want to, but maybe you do. There we go. Okay, I could undo or control Z over and over again, but I can also just go to erase, erase all ink. Uh, then there's crop. So let's go back to this graphic and select the crop. And what you do is grab the grab bars at the side, resize to whatever your heart desires, or I'm gonna make it uh, look like that. That's actually kind of neat. And I'm gonna click okay on that and boom, that's now my graphic. And again, I could take that, paste it into something beyond my way. Now what's missing from here is the ability to mark this up with text. In other words, I can't click in here and start typing on my keyboard, which I find a bit frustrating. Fortunately, there's an easy way for Microsoft to fix this and I hope they do. We'll get to that in just a moment. So now we're down to save. The only thing interesting in save is that there are three different types, JPEG, PNG, and GIF. Save is generally pointless for these because typically when you're taking a screen grab, it's so you can send it to somebody, which means you put it in an email or a document or something else. But you may want to save it, so that's why that's there. Copy is there because of this. Let's say you are in a Word document, and I'm going to get rid of that right now, okay? So I'm going to click Copy and put that in my clipboard. And now I'm just going to start writing my letter, right? So there's my letter. It's very, very nice. And I realize, oh, right, I need to, um, I really want that text again. So I copy that text. I just used, oh, I'll do it so you can see it. I use Control C, but let me just do Copy here, go down, and I'll paste it in there. Now you think, okay, oh, right, I gotta put that snip in. I'll make some space and I'll right click and I'll select paste again. Well, where is it? How do I get it? Yeah, that's right, because you replaced your clipboard with the text, the graphic from your snip is now gone. But easy enough to get back, just go back to your snip and click copy. And now I can go back into my Word document or Outlook or PowerPoint or email or whatever. And there it is. So that's why copy is there. This is send to or share and it's largely pointless. So we'll click on it just to explain it. You can push this out to a TV or other device, but I struggle to find a use case for that. Email it to a, to a particular contact, same thing. You're just much faster to launch your Outlook or whatever program you're using and paste it in, Gmail, Yahoo, whatever. Uh, and same thing with these uh, items at the bottom. It's just easier to launch them directly. So I'm gonna get rid of that because I don't want it and clicking the ellipsis at the end, you get more options. Open file is pointless because you will almost certainly never open a graphic like a PNG or a GIF or JPEG into the snipping tool to mark it up. That's just silly because it's so limited. Open with, however, is kind of the opposite end. So let's just show you what that is. I'm gonna click open with, and this is going to bring up any of the programs that I have on my computer, which the snipping tool can paste directly into. Now. You might use Photoshop, or I use Corel Photo Paint sometimes. I use Paint.net mostly, but there's lots of other things. So let's just go into Paint.net and I'll show you why that's helpful. And there it is. Now, the advantage to Paint.net, for instance, is I can just start typing. This is a sample from the snipping tool in Win 11. I can add layers, there's a magic wand to select things. Paint.net is great. And just to go off on this tangent, Paint.net was written by uh, some Microsoft engineers on their own time. And so while it's not officially part of Windows 11, it's free. You can just go to .pdn.com slash downloads slash pdn.html if you want it. Okay, by the way, no, they haven't paid us anything. Uh, and considering it's a free tool, that's not a surprise. Let's go. All right, so let's minimize that. All right, next, print. Here's the problem with print. It doesn't support scaling. 
So if you want this to fill the page, yeah, it won't do it. If you want it to be across six pages, yeah, it won't do it. You know what will? Paint.net. So I can go to File, Print, as an example, and I can say I want it to fit the page, and I actually want, uh, well, let's do five of these. We'll just show you what this will do. So I'll go here. All right, you get the idea? So I'm not gonna spend time on Paint.net. This is not a Paint.net course, but you get the idea that printing in here is really weak as well. All right, let's get rid of that. Now, there are some interesting things in settings, but before we go there, we're gonna skip all the way down to tips and tricks. Uh, tips and tricks are a waste of time because, yeah, they're not actually tips and tricks for the snipping tool. They're your generic Windows 11 tips and tricks. So just ignore that altogether. Send Feedback is also just going to launch the generic Windows 11 feedback tool. So if you have a comment or a problem, you can notify Microsoft of it. Where it gets interesting is under settings. So let's go into settings and you can see here that there's an option to change your print screen key on your physical keyboard so that when you press the print screen key, instead of taking a screen grab of the entire screen, what it will do is launch the snipping tool. So let, let's just get out of that, I'll just show you. So we'll uh, move this down a bit just to get it out of the way. So if I press the print screen on my keyboard, there it is. And I will just take a little snip here. All right, so let's show you how to set that up. So we'll go into settings. Now, if you click, you have to click change settings to do this. And it's going to say, hey, are you sure you you that you're doing this and there's not some virus software? Yeah, no, it's me. And you can see right here, that's where that setting is. Okay, enough said there. Auto copy to clipboard, yes. What'll happen if you don't have this on is every time you take a snip, you'll have to click the copy button, which is just a pain. Why do that? So just leave that on. Save snips. No, I don't want to save snips. So let me just show you this. Let me minimize this to clean up the screen a bit and I'll show you what that means. Let's click new here and I want to grab, we'll grab that. Okay, now I'm going to go into Word and I'm going to paste this snip. There it is. And I'm done with this one. So close, that's yeah, gone. So you didn't prompt me, like settings. So no, don't ask me to save them. Multiple windows, this is very useful. You almost certainly want to have that on. Although there are some use cases where you don't. So let's click on this. I've got two of these snipping tools open right now. Let's just move those around. What if you want to take another, another step? So I'm going to click new here and I'm going to drag into slightly into another screen even that I've got because I'm running two screens. And you can see that it didn't overwrite this snip. It still let me keep that snip. So now I've got these three going and I can just keep doing that. So that is what this setting does. The multiple windows. Snip outline. Some people like this, some people don't. It's just what it says. So you can see in my snips, I've got a red border on them. Well, where'd that come from? Yeah, right here. Settings, uh, snip outline. And I could set that border to, let's set it to blue. And uh, I'll click OK. And I want it to be way thicker. There we go. I'll click back. And you can see, boom, it's put that border on for me. And from now on, new, new snips will have that same large fat border, right? So you get the idea? So what's missing from the snipping tool are a bunch of little things that just drive people crazy. Number one, no text markup. You can draw on it, but you can't actually type anything. Secondly, printing is really bad. And then thirdly, all of the cool graphics things that you'd wanna do like add layers and have a magic wand to select certain areas of the graphic. All of those things are not available. So there's a really easy fix that Microsoft could do, but just hasn't yet. And that is when I click or when you click new, what I would like it to do is, there we go, we'll grab a new snip there. And instead of launching the snipping tool as a, some sort of editor, it would be great if it would just go straight to whatever your default graphic package is, which in my case is paint.net. That would make an awful lot more sense. Then I get layers and I get filters and that's that. Hey, if you found this video useful, please click like and possibly subscribe as that is what really helps with the Google algorithms these days. If you have a question or comment, put them in the comment section below and someone will get back to you or where you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech. That's www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye bye.